<laughs> she just told Grandma off for not having her part ready. Okay. Good morning. Hello. Christmas Eve. It is officially Christmas Eve. What you doing? Which means it's time to make my special buttermilk pancakes <laughs> for breakfast. So that's what I'm doing. This is a secret recipe that's on our website. So it's not so secret. But don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. I thought we were using the pancake mix. I am, just because I want like a low carb. We just, I decided, I made the executive decision that Dad, my are buttermilk you pancakes. Make, are you going to make dream syrup? Yep. Yes. I mean, uh, is, is dream it? syrup on our website too? I believe it is, yeah. We make buttermilk pancakes, and then we make dream syrup, which is basically... Caramel. Caramel. It's buttermilk and butter and sugar. Vanilla. Oh, come on, people. I, I'm going to have these, because I like them, and they're low carb low sugar but Mike makes some killer buttermilk pancakes they're really good I think anything with buttermilk is killer so it's not that hard just put a bunch of buttermilk in it it's gonna be killer mm. and in the oven we have some sausage yes. then we're gonna load them up with syrup and applesauce maybe sour cream if you want jam yes you're wearing Christmas colors Jude did you do that on purpose um, no, I, I sort of wear like Christmas colors, was, red and green. It was Christmas, <laughs> and then I want to make Christmas colors. That's dream syrup, right, Megan? She's in charge of stirring it. No. It's gotta warm up a little bit, and then we put the vanilla in, and it's then the best thing ever. So that's all. The syrup's done. I added salt this time, so it's like salty caramel. Oh, it's boy. all foamy, but when, it, when the foam settles, it's like golden. We should put those in two separate containers, though, so that it's easier. <laughs> you all right? I think I'm slobbering, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like salivating while watching myself. I choked in my own saliva. It's good stuff. There it is. There's the color. See it in there? The caramely color. <gasps> yeah. The bubbles will all pop and then you'll see it. Is it good? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Not everyone's awake, so we don't have the whole crew here, but. Does that one pass the napkins? We are eating pretty good. Okay, breakfast is done. And now Megan and I, Megan's getting her shoes on, but we've been working on a scavenger hunt we're doing for the kids tomorrow to um, basically Announce. do the announcement or the surprise as far as big family present goes. You didn't have know. you have we said what this is? Mm -mm. Do people know? Some people might know who's been around. If you if you've been around you know, but if not, what we're doing for the kids this year is we're doing a trip, an epic trip instead of a big Christmas. <laughs> but I'm not sure if those numbers actually play out like we thought they would. But either way they're getting an epic trip this year, and the way that we're gonna show it to them, or I guess give it to them, is through a scavenger hunt where they're gonna go 
find clues, get, they'll each get a little gift that's kind of related to the bigger thing. And then at the end, they'll learn what the actual gift Unless is. Unless they put it together before then. And it's possible they might figure it out before then because the, the gifts themselves have some clues related to where we're going. Would you call this poetry, Megan? Yes, I would definitely call it poetry. This is serious poetry we're writing right now. Fine, fine poetry. But they're gonna, so, so that's what we're working on. It's we're putting it down here on the computer. It's a little slow going. It's kind of slow going because we really have to think about where stuff's hidden and also the thing that they're actually finding and how to bring it all together. So, so you'll need to watch tomorrow to see the actual, you know, scavenger hunt and the reveal of their big present. Right now we're trying to just figure out the fine line. You, if you're going to do a scavenger hunt, you want the clues to be hard enough that they don't just immediately like, Oh, here that they're all like, no, 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 no. What about this? What about this? And then they all run and you want it to be wrong. Maybe a few of the times at least until they find it. But you also don't know how smart your kids are, and then you kind of find out how smart you aren't, I think, when you write the clues, and either they can't figure them out at all, or they figure it out early. But it's also really, really, really fun that they finally get to find out tomorrow. And in case you're wondering, there are two kids who know. One, because he kind of figured it out. Peter, Peter put it together, because I didn't realize that he would be gathering those details. Should have been I'll, next time I'll be more careful, but, and then some jerk on the internet put it together from my Pinterest boards and actually went to Esther's Instagram and commented on one of her posts and said, your parents are giving you a surprise trip for Christmas and they're taking you here. So may he glory in his misery that he wants to ruin someone's Christmas surprise. But anyways, they're the only two who know, nobody else knows. And I'm super, 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 super excited. And also those two don't know as much um, Peter purposely didn't look into the place and I think Esther too just kind of put it out of her mind as soon as she found out. Okay, I've got the clues here. I printed them out and I'm going to, I also highlighted some words that might give them like pack and case so they know like, oh, suitcase. Um, just, just to give them a little push. I don't even know if they'll notice that, but for the younger kids especially. Every kid is getting a gift as part of it that is something they probably kind of asked for or that was a good gift for them and we've woven into the clues so like eves is a travel barbie right so then the clue will lead them to where this is hidden and then the next clue will be in there with it so that should be fun this is the first one wrapped what i just showed you and then i got these labels and i put the one on it with their name just in case they came upon another clue when they were looking so they, they might then know where that clue is, but it doesn't go out of order. Mm -hmm. And then I put the name so they know who gets to unwrap it. I chose this like kind of, I don't know, something that would look like clue type of. Mm -hmm. It's not like Christmas, but I thought it might be fun. So one down. Seven, seven more to go. To go. How'd it go, Mom? Great. I forgot to put the clue in only one box. Mm. So I had to open it up again. But um, there were a, spe a couple special things. This one is going to be hanging in the trees. Right. So we did it in a bag. And then Esther wanted a speaker, MP3. Like a Bluetooth speaker. Yeah, and so we're going to use that. They have to follow their ears. We're going to be playing traditional music of the place. And so this is actually just gonna go over the speaker. Right. And then you lift it off and. Right. So she won't actually unwrap in a way, but she'll play. These are not their only presents. This is just, we'll do stockings, give them their first clue, they'll do the scavenger hunt, and then they'll open the rest of their gifts. Okay. The presents are safely stowed in the closet. We still have some wrapping to do. The next thing that needs to happen here is if you didn't watch, Esther and I redid this Barbie motorhome for Eve, which was fun and it's super cute. And we haven't put it out yet because we knew it was so big that 
the kids wouldn't be able to leave it alone. But now it's Christmas Eve day, we can put it out. We just have to get it wrapped. Go ahead and roll it onto the paper. <laughs> Drive it up. I think what we'll do is just pull it up. Are you gonna put it under the tree? Yeah. You ready to take it out? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, like a big baby. Hey, Evie. Where's Evie? I think she's outside, actually. Maybe hide it on the other side of the tree. Yeah, that's a good spot. That's Eve's thing from Esther. Perfect. Daddy-o here is making stew. So you're browning bit by bit. Yeah. Painfully. This is kind of tedious process, but it pays off in the end i think yes it does, right this is one of the things dad makes and he always knocks everybody's socks off with it if you haven't ever watched us on christmas eve um our tradition christmas eve which we got from our friends seven years ago maybe and on christmas eve we have a shepherd's dinner the dinner the food itself has gone through many iterations because we've had some serious fails where nobody wanted to eat it it was way too authentic um, or, not authentic enough, or not authentic enough or whatever so um, but the main thing is we get a little dressed up you don't have to go too far but you know you kind of look like a shepherd from the year you know 1 BC and then we set up a tent around the table and we eat in there and have candlelight and then we have we do the story of Luke 2 from the New Testament which is that just that's the story of the best and longest and most detailed version of the birth of Jesus Christ in the New Testament. Here, so last year we did like cured meats and olives and nuts and stuff, but I ate so much cured meat and cheese. I was so sick. And then we thought, you know what? Stew or tagine or whatever you want to call it, a pretty basic historic food. And we're going with that. Since we all love it, you can put it in a bowl. It's simple, it's easy. feed a lot of people. So dad's making his... Well, easy to eat yeah. and serve. And it seems like they would have eaten something like that. It seems like it would have. It's good enough for us. Other years we've done like pilaf with, you know, or couscous and lamb or fish. And it's just like, you know what? Let's not do it. Um, so now I'm going to go get out of storage all of our, like, we, we have fabric and things that we use to make the tent and then see how much, if we have enough, and if not, we might pull in some, some bed sheets too. Esther is going to make some date cookies, which are just one part dates to one part cashews, a little bit of vanilla, maybe some salt, if these aren't already salted. Put them in the food processor, roll them into balls. They're super good. Oh, Bobby? Yeah, well, there's a big present from Esther. Come look. Okay. Look at Evie, that's for you. But you can't open it yet. You get to open it tomorrow. Uh, puppy! Uh, oh, is that what you think it is? Yeah, I'm uh, Oh, we'll see. We'll mommy, see. I'm Okay, go get them. Here's the box. I've got, we bought a bunch of these back in the day at Walmart for like a dollar a yard. So, we've got to figure out this room should actually be pretty simple. These kids are having a special D&D, &D, Halloween D&D. &D. Christmas, you mean? Sorry. <laughs> well, probably more appropriate for Halloween. Christmas Dungeons and Dragons. It's, it's No Malone. It's no like, Malone. They're, they're the bandits breaking into the gnome's house. Oh, that's fun. And we're um, failing. <laughs> horribly. Hey, Ash, this is why I don't have any lighters at work, because you just keep messing with them. I'm trying to fix the candle. Yeah, well, that candle's just out. Oh. I just mix it up for like 45 seconds to a minute. And then I just take a chunk and then I, because the dates are uh, sticky, I just squeeze it into a ball. Yeah. Oops. And then I kind of have to get it for 
Mm -hmm. And then I just roll it into a ball. And then I just put them in here. And then chill them? Yep. Perfect. The very first time I made these, I got vanilla and vinegar mixed up. <laughs> and I didn't put it in. Um, good thing I asked how much vanilla vinegar I should put in. Um, I think I like, because it was back when I first came home. And I don't know how long we made this, but... Anyways, you suggested I would make I make it by myself because I we all we loved it. And I was making it with a friend. And then I came to your room and I was like, Mom, how much vinegar should I put in? And Dad just like does it look like like what? <laughs> and he's like, Do you even vanilla? And I'm like, oh yeah. And then it's like worked out, I think. That's funny. Dad is working so on the stew. The meat is cooking. So it'll be a, probably a couple hours before that's done. So we're just kinda of setting out uh, cheese and crackers and fruit. Which will be super yummy. And uh, that's it. My, I don't know if I showed you. My parents are here. We had vlog yesterday. We just needed a day off. Um, but I think they're kind of taking a breather. Weston and Allison are here. And so the kids are just all kind of running around. Andrew, what are you working on? I'm building the tents. Nice. What do you, what's your plan for that? I don't have one yet. Ah, nice. We'll see what's gonna happen. So? We're just, I don't know, should we talk? We're, so we're doing a long one in the middle and two short ones on the side. So, because we didn't have enough long ones to do it. Do it. Just. Hello. Hello. And then we've got the, um, the opening sealed up. Let's see the tent. Da, 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 da. So we have our entranceway right here. Nice. Are you Cute. Entering? Love it. Thank you. Looks awesome. Good job, guys. It's probably about an hour later than we originally planned it. And I was in charge of this stew, and little mistake I made. Um, this recipe does not scale when you try to multiply it times six as well Because when I was I was trying to brown all the meat beforehand you put it you put the meat in flour You know coat it and then you brown it, but if you have to use we use literally like 10 pounds of meat It's there's so much building up in the bottom of the pan that it just burns and that's what happened And now the whole thing there's like burned like bits throughout so I've got these like burn bits and it's made the whole thing taste, really loud. Um, taste um like it was cooked over an open flame. Yeah, very so smoky. Wait, I'm trying the fish one so when you Kind of a up, smoky you know, burn taste. Charcoal y stew. Yeah, so brisket. That's the lesson I learned. I think next time if I do this I won't use the um, multiply times ten. Well, maybe not, and I also won't use the flour over the meat. Just brown the meat as is. It's like now I feel like I've won the. Look at that. Is that those don't taste. I mean, you can get by with the soupy stuff, but the big chunks are just like putting a piece of charcoal in your mouth. So everybody's starting to get the dinner table set, and the kids are starting to get into costume. And we're just about to eat. Got our sparkling. I'm not sure Apple if the juice. cider is accurate to the time. But we have the soup here. We, um, I decided to try to make an authentic shepherd soup, which means shepherds don't really know what they're doing when they cook and tend to burn their food. So you might sense a, a slight smoky sort of burn. I like smoky burn. Slightly burn. intense. We'll have a little contest. We'll have a contest. Whoever finds the biggest black chunk in their soup wins tonight, okay? Like, what? Dollar, a dollar? The Piece of charcoal. Charcoal in your soup will win. Dinner is done, and now it's time to reenact the first Christmas. We've got Mary and Joseph. We've got angels, shepherds, wise, wise men. men. Let's go. Right. Random people. These shepherds are kissing over here. Watch out. Uh-oh. Whoa, I mean, they are married, so. <laughs> yeah. Those days, there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea. Mary! Go, Mary! Go with your husband! <laughs> oh, 
And laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. There you go. Baby boy. That's exactly how Mary probably felt right there. <laughs> Exhausted. Yeah. And we're going to sing Away in a Manger. That little Lord Jesus, asleep on the hay. Angels are and the here. the glory of the Lord shone round about them. They were, Ta -da! Afraid. <gasps> they were really afraid. The shepherds are afraid. Shepherds. To them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy mild. Big nine three sages. Joseph. Joseph's already split. He's out. <laughs> she just told Grandma off for not having her part ready. Holy Scratch, round young virgin, mother and child. Holy infant so tender and mild. <laughs> We're excited. Okay, so start from the beginning. Tell us about your flight to Japan. Um, okay, so uh, we flew from Salt Lake City to Portland. How much spending money do you get each month? Um, something like 350 bucks. U.S. dollars? Yeah. For your food, your toiletries, that sort of thing? Yeah. End of the night. Wes and Allison headed home. So we're bedtime. All right. Good night. All the kids are in bed, right? They well, they're upstairs so, at least. I've never had them so anxious to go to bed. I wish they wanted to go to bed that bad every night. Mm. Now we're here getting things ready for the final, sort of the final no clue. Excuse me. Yeah, the final clue for. Um, it's, not even, it's not really even the clue. It's just telling them what we're doing. Yeah. So this is going to be in the mailbox, and we're going to have eight envelopes, and it'll be like numbered. Mm-hmm. And it'll like it's like our itinerary. Yeah. And so like the first one, Atlanta International Airport. <laughs> and so. Because we want to hold the suspense as long as possible. Now I'm printing out some labels that we'll put on the back. So this will be in an envelope. One person will open it. They'll read on the back details of like our flight. And then it'll go to the next one and next one, next one. So we're, we have all these photos of places. And then we're using labels. To kind of explain the place a little bit. So mm -hmm. they so. get excited about it, right? Yeah. And then we just have to wrap a boatload of presents. <laughs> I know. We, I'm so tired. We, last year we didn't. We were good. We we wrapped them before Christmas Eve, but this year it just didn't We've happen. We've been so, so busy. So just like this. So they can just read the details right there on the back. Nice. Okay. These are all in their envelopes, which will be the final clue. Will lead them to this. Yes. Okay. And now. Now it's just time to wrap some regular presents. So, Megan, we don't, we don't even have to write poems for these presents or anything. Just wrap them. It's pretty easy. <laughs> okay. Sitting on the floor too long wrapping presents. Yep. One of the things we do with the stockings is everybody gets a book. And we wrap them. Just, you know, to have more to wrap. Okay. Shh. Are you hanging that to me? No. Okay. 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 Our gifts are out. Now just Santa needs to show up and bring his gifts. 
but we do need to hide the gifts for the scavenger hunt. This one goes out in the trees. Oh, good idea with the hook. Uh, thank you. And uh, we need to take one to the mailbox. Do you want to grab that one? It's on the floor in the bedroom. And one outside to the crawl space. So the rest will be inside. Mike's going to the mailbox. I need to find a tree out here with a branch. <laughs> They're all so trimmed. Hmm. It's also kind of spooky. I don't really want to walk out there. I kind of spooked out. It's kind of too spooky to walk out there. I'm afraid my camera's gonna capture something, you know? And I'm gonna be like, we will see it later on. There's no like branches. Just this tree is the only one, I guess. And that one's up there. All right. That was a long day. It was. We got up. Christmas Eve. Pancake breakfast. And I can't remember anything after that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys remember. You tell us. No. But it was a happy day, but it was a long day. And that's our fault. We probably should have, like, wrapped a single present. I know. Before 10, 10 p.m. on Christmas Eve. Mm-hmm. But it's all Din done now. Yeah. Dinner was a bit of a fail. I don't know if we showed it very clearly, but that stew was womp, nearly womp. inedible when it came down to it, sadly. It's a good recipe. It's just I multiplied it too much. We have not had so a successful do... Christmas Eve meal yet. I thought I thought this was like fail safe because we've I done know. this recipe before. We just One time, haven't done it that way. Remember thing. when we made lamb our first shepherd's meal and it tasted like fish? Lamb shouldn't taste like fish. That was like yeah, eight years that ago. That was our first one. It was really bad. So every year has some snafu. <laughs> we have got to figure this out, people. <laughs> if you have some recommendations on what we should eat. Oh, I'm sure they do. Let us know. But otherwise, are you so excited for tomorrow's video? Because I be am. We can't wait. We need to get some sleep, though. It's what, midnight? It's uh, 12, 12.20 a.m. Midnight 20. So it's Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. All right, guys. We love you. Happy holidays. And uh, you can have a head over to our website. Uh, but otherwise, come back tomorrow. I'm sorry. Come back tomorrow and see the whole exciting reveal of the epic trip and the scavenger hunt. Bye. See ya.